Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to be talking about a roadmap for learning Django. So Django, when you are first starting out, can be a little bit complex for some people to first of all understand what is going on. That's why some people first learn Flask before they learn Django and some people take other routes. But if you have the right roadmap and the right learning resources and you know what to learn, it's going to be far easier for you. So the what i'm just going to be talking about in this video is a simple roadmap that means what you should learn what you should focus on more to be able to get Django and learning within a short time so this video is actually from a blog post if you want the written version of this video you can just check out on my blog at codewithtomi.ml i'm going to link it in the description below also so we're just gonna go through all the points i made in this video so i said the first thing you need to do is to learn django is to learn python so obviously django is a python web framework now this means that using python we can build web applications with django so before you can know anything that's going around the django you need to first of all have an understanding of python now a lot of people do learn Django first, even before learning the programming language. And some people say they prefer it like that. Some people say they like learning the framework before the language. I personally would recommend learning the language before the framework. Not only Django this time around, it sticks to any framework you're learning. If it's React, if it's Vue.js, if it's Spring Boot, if it's any other thing you're learning, actually. You should know the language before learning the framework. Because most of the times, or sometimes, not most of the times, the errors you occur in the frameworks, most sometimes they are related to the language, that's the programming language. And if you don't really have an understanding of the language, you won't know how to debug it easier. So sometimes you might get an error that it's not even from that framework. Like in Django, sometimes you might get an error that is from Python, not from Django. And then you thinking it's from Django, you're searching on Stack Overflow or something else might get you confused but if you know python and you see that error you'll be more familiar with it and it will be far easier for you so even apart from that i highly recommend learning the language before the framework because that's just the right way to go so once you know python very well i'll recommend that you get familiar with the command lines so when you're developing in django you're going to work a lot with the command line interface the so django has its own like built-in command lines that you're going to use to do a lot of things in the application. Now, just like Git, just like Git and GitHub, Git has a lot of command, like a lot, and you can't learn everything, but there are some that you need to learn that you use like 90% of the time. Now, that same applies to Django. There are also a bunch of command lines that I don't even know all of it because it's not possible to just have everything on your head. Sometimes you might just need to look up some because you don't use them every single time. But there are some command line that you're going to use every single time you want to build or develop a project using Django. So like the command line to create a new project, to create a new app, to migrate your database, to run your server. All those command line, like 10 or 20 of it, you use 90% of the time. Then those ones, I think you should be very familiar with it. Now, once you know the command line interface, or once you just you are you know how to interact with the CLI, I recommend that you start learning Django and start learning the Django basic concepts. So what I mean is, because Django has some processes and some things you need to do before you can get it up and running. So those are the things I'm talking about. You learning. So if you are following the right tutorial, the the tutorial should show you. Django from scratch, so you should learn all the basic concepts like how to create a new project, create a new app, how to do the URL mapping, how to set up your template file, your HTML file, the static CSS and stuff, running your project on localhost. So I would recommend you get familiar with all those stuff because you use it almost all the time. Now, after that, I recommend that you learn the Django views. So what the Django views are is like, let me say, the bedrock of the application or the main point of the application. So when you create a new Django project and then you set up your HTML file or you connect it to React or whatever you are using, you 
you are going to use the views all the time because everything you're going to do is going to be done in the views so let's say you want a user to sign up all the back end is going to be done in the django views or you want the user to update a database or you want to show a list of a data or something all these are going to be done in django views now there are two type of views which are function based views and class based views there's also a lot of controversies between these two just like the controversies between django and flask there's also controversy between the function based view and the class based view but i think personally that anyone you use it doesn't matter as long as you get the job done i personally use function based views almost all the time but when i'm dealing with the django rest framework i use the class based views a lot because it's far easier then so you just knowing the two will be very good for you and knowing when to use which one so if you know only function based views that's good and if you choose class based views that's good there's no problem with the two so after you know that i recommend that you know how to use the django models so the django models is like the database so django has this powerful stuff called the orm object relational mapper so it allows you to like write databases without even having to know sql or writing any sql code so it allows you to use the django models to write databases so think of the django model like the name of your database and each attribute in that in that model is going to be like a table in your database so with the django model you're going to be like building databases using python classes not sql code so that's very powerful to me coming from a background of writing sql for databases and stuff so i recommend you know and get familiar with the django models because you're going to use it a lot and also with databases now this database is very very similar to django models i mean it's the same thing actually but just knowing databases and sometimes you might want to integrate third party databases because at the default django uses sqlite but me personally i love using postgres in my application just because i love it and it's more like scalable than just the sqlite but if you want to stick to SQLite, it's also fine. I mean, a lot of applications are powered with just SQLite. So you might you just want to get familiar with some other databases like MongoDB, PostgreSQL, and stuff. After that, I recommend you knowing authentication and authorization in Django. So if you are not familiar with what I mean by authentication, it means if I explain it in a layman's language or to anybody that is not even a developer it means like logging in and signing up to your platform so when you log into facebook you are authenticating into that website so or you are or facebook is giving you authorization to log into that particular account that's what it means so if you know how to set this up in your django project of course it will be good because now each user has a personalized data you are not just having a general data so django has like a default user model which already helps you to take care of this and they also have an auth model authentication model which allows you to easily authenticate the user so django is an high level framework so most of the stuff has been done just for you to know how to go about it and know what's going on in the back end and the last thing i would recommend you knowing when you're starting out is how to deploy your application now, this is a very important and crucial part and let me say i won't say it's complex but it a tiny bit of mistake can cause a whole lot of bugs in your application so deploying a django project i recommend you learning that there are a ton of videos you can deploy with iroku you can deploy with covery you can deploy with you know digital ocean you can even deploy with firebase if you know how to go about that so there are a lot of ways you can deploy your django projects to the web so you don't just only want to just be building your project and your local host you can deploy it to the web and just add it to your portfolio so you know any employer or any or any freelancing clients can easily check everything you've built so deployment is also very good so these things i just listed are just to help you get started with django so why i listed all this is so that when you're watching a video tutorial you know the one with the quality with the with what you need to learn so each every django beginners tutorial should have all of this i mean should teach all of this so at least to the authentication part 
most of them don't, don't teach the deployment you can watch it on a different video but they should teach at least with the authentication part so once you know that you can start building web apps using Django. so i really hope you enjoyed this video and now you know the parts to go when you're learning Django. now having that said thank you so much for watching this video and bye for now